Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. I want to say something before we get going on all of the news here today. As many of you are well aware, hopefully, yesterday on this program, Tony Khan was on the show. He was on for two segments. We talked about all sorts of different things, okay? So at the end of the show, I gave everybody a wink, all right? Wake up this morning, and the big show has signed with AEW. And so I go online, and what do I see? Ah, oh, Brian knew about the big show. That's why he winked. Listen, I guess I could come on here and lie and tell you that I knew about the big show, but I had absolutely no idea. I didn't even believe it when I saw it. I was like, what? The wink? Listen, everybody. In a few days, you're going to know why I winked, and it's not some massive scoop okay it'll be abundantly clear i'll tell you about it when it happens but anyway i i had it had nothing to do with with the big show i've also seen people that they get very upset they're like oh dave and brian they spoil things all the time for for wwe but we never hear any spoilers about AEW. how come how come dave didn't report that sting was gonna debut oh they're protecting listen everybody I, i'll be perfectly honest with you I talk to a lot of people in AEW, okay? No one tells me anything, okay? I shouldn't say that. I hear about a lot of things after they happen, okay? I never hear about anything before it happens. I don't think Dave ever hears. Dave didn't know about Sting either. Nobody says anything about anything that's going to happen. Once something happens, I usually say, what happened here? Is so-and-so okay? Blah, 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 blah. And then I get answers, but I never hear anything in advance. So there is no, oh, well, you know, we're just trying to protect AEW. We hear all these scoops, and we don't talk about it till after. Bro, I can't tell you literally the only thing that I knew, the only thing that I can think that I knew wasn't even an angle, and that was that I had heard that Brody Lee was in very bad shape. That's literally the only thing. And out of respect, because nobody wanted anybody to say anything about a man's physical... I didn't say anything, but that's it! That's literally the only thing that I can think of. So, let's talk about the big show here, which I found out about today. And until I saw it, like, I didn't even believe it. The big show is going to AEW. Now, some people have said, well, I don't think that's a big story at all. Well, I, listen, I don't know. But all I know is this. We got a guy that was with WWE, he debuted in WWE in 1999. He holds the record for, like, the most babyface and heel turns, partly because he's been there since 1999. Well, he decided in 2021, I'm going to AEW. That in itself is a big story. Now, do I think that this is going to turn AEW around or anything like that? No, I don't. Okay. Do I think that he's going to be like a regular in the ring for AEW? I don't. Paul White is a... is a Whatever you want to say about his wrestling or his wrestling at his age. The guy is a very talented guy. Do you know why Paul White could turn babyface and heel like 39 times or whatever the current number is? Because he was really good at portraying a smiling, jolly giant, and he was very good at portraying a really mean, angry giant. So, I believe that we've heard him on commentary before. I mean, not a lot of times, but I think he's done it before. But I think he's going to probably do a pretty good job doing commentary for this show. Now, as far as in the ring here and there, I don't know. He's in his mid-40s, okay? But I do know one thing about Paul White. When Paul White first debuted in World Championship Wrestling, if you recall, for a very short period of time, they tried to pretend he was the actual son of Andre the Giant. Okay, That's Andre's shirt. Yeah, he's the son of Andre the Giant. Uh, eventually they stopped doing that. But the point was, if you followed his career in World Championship Wrestling from 1996 through 1999... They actually did a really good job with him. He was a pretty effective giant. So then, Vince McMahon decided he was going to steal this man, and he was going to sign him to a very lucrative deal, okay? And he was going to come in, and you guys all remember what the idea was when they brought in the giant to the WWF? 
Well, Vince said, These fools don't know how to book a giant? He's gonna be my Andre. I'm gonna book him like Andre the Giant. Well, if you're old enough to remember how Vince booked Andre the Giant, if you want to contrast that as to how he booked the big show when he got him, well, he didn't book him like Andre the Giant. He booked him like every other geek. Bro, the big show was beaten clean in the middle of the ring three weeks into showing up in WWF. Whatever Vince wanted to say about how the other side booked him, the other side booked him way better than Vince did. So you had a guy that you probably could have booked like Andre the Giant, that instead he was just a tall fella. And he was beaten, and he was humiliated, and he was sent back to OVW because they thought he was too heavy, and then he came back heavier, and then they would... It was just like, it was a disaster. And so he had his ups and downs in, in WWF, but was the big show ever Andre the Giant? No. Not for one second was he Andre the Giant. Because Vince apparently forgot how he booked Andre the Giant. Now, you know what you could do in AEW? What's that? You could book Paul White... Like Andre the Giant. He rarely wrestles. He's used sparingly in the ring. He's a monster that comes in and he's he's never in the title picture. He's always in there like you got some some bloke that, you know, he's a big loudmouth heel and whatever. And Andre shows up and he kills the guy. Big show. Big show. Well, I mean, that's my point is he can be Andre now. He, you now, can actually, now you, now you can be Andre the Giant. Now you nine one one. Yes. Yes. There you go. He's a, a baby face. Nine one. I guess nine one one was a baby face. No matter who he choke slam, they just wanted to see a choke slam, so they were happy to see nine one one. Maybe Paul White can do that. So anyway, I'll give them. I'll give them time. I want to see what they want to do with the big show. And you know what? I don't know because I don't know anything. Because no one tells me anything in advance. I don't know. Yeah. How does that feel? I don't huh? know if he's going to face Shaq. Uh-huh. But that was a match both sides wanted. And it was teased multiple times for WrestleMania. And it never happened. Well, now Cody injured his, his rotator cuff. And what I had been told after he hurt himself was that he believed that he was going to be ready for Shaq. Maybe he will be still. Or maybe he's not going to be ready for Shaq. But you know who you have? You have the former Big Show. You have Paul White. So, I guess we'll see what happens, but I don't rule that out. Well, I guess if you got to make chicken salad out of something else with a celebrity guest, the big show, excuse me, Paul White is the perfect person to have along with that. You remember when he debuted, too, as the big show, the takeoff of TBS? They never ended up calling him that because, you know, that would lead to issues. One thing I remember about Paul White debuting at uh, St. Valentine's Day Massacre came out from under the ring. I was in Atlantic City to see Ringo Starr's Traveling All-Star Band that actually had Sheila E. was on percussion. Uh, the bassist from Cream was there. Uh, the lead singer and keyboard player from Procol Harum. It was a really good weekend. That's Thank nice. You. That was my TED Talk. <laughs> so somebody on the chat here while you were giving your TED Talk, they said, the Big Show can't even move in the ring. Well, first off, the Big Show can move in the ring. I mean, he can't do moonsaults at this age. But let's stop for a second, everybody. Here, uh, You know what? I'll do a quiz as we go to commercial. You tell me the period that Andre the Giant was at his absolute peak, Okay. I'm going to give you some time to think about this. The early, no. You might be thinking, mm, France in the 60s. No, that's not right. <laughs> okay? Sure? I'm going to give you some time to think about it. I didn't say, I didn't say his physical peak. Physical, okay. I said like his peak as an effective professional wrestler that, that drew money and put butts in the seats and all that kind of stuff. Think about it. I'll be right back. If you love these video clips, head down there to the bottom right-hand side of the screen and click Join. For just $7.99 per month, you get full access to all of the episodes, over 300 at current count, full-length episodes of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, and Figure Four Daily with both Lance Storm and Filthy Tom Lawler. You can also hit that subscribe button, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows are available.